Welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews in partnership with Roadrunner Sports, and today we're taking a look at one of the most popular shoes on the market. It's the Brooks Adrenaline GTS 23. What's wrong with it? Before we get started, I do want to say that these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, no one had a chance to preview this video, and this file synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. The Adrenaline series from Brooks is one of their most popular shoes. It's a workhorse stability daily trainer. It kind of does a little bit of everything. It's also a very popular walking shoe, lifestyle shoe. This shoe just kind of does it all, if you will, and that's why it's been around for so long. A lot of people love this, and we have some minor upgrades here to talk about here on the 23rd edition. And to give the Adrenaline some context within the broader Brooks running shoe lineup, it's essentially just the stability version of the Brooks Ghost. So you can tell they look awfully similar and that's because they are. The only difference really between these two shoes is the guide rails, which we'll talk about later in the review. Brooks does this with a lot of their running shoes in their lineup. They'll take the standard neutral edition. If they want to create a stability running shoe, they'll add guide rails on both the lateral and medial side, creating the GTS edition, which stands for go to support. So if you want a bit more cushioning compared to something like the Ghost of the Adrenaline, you go up to the glycerin. Now this is the neutral glycerin, but if you wanted a stability Brooks glycerin, you would get the glycerin GTS, which features guide rails on the shoe. So I hope that makes sense. But the long and short of it is Brooks typically has two different versions of their shoe. They'll have the neutral version and then the GTS or go to support version, which just adds guide rails to that neutral midsole making it a stability shoe. And then for some other options as well, they'll have like a stealth fit, but that's a whole another story for another day. Both shoes cost $140. The Adrenaline 23 comes in at roughly 10.1, which is fine for stability shoe. It's not bad, it's not great. While the Ghost 15 comes in at 9.8, so slightly lighter compared to its stability counterpart, which makes sense. As far as stack height comes in, we have 24 in the heel, 12 in the forefoot for that classic Brooks relatively high 12 millimeter heel to toe drop. Something else to note about the Adrenaline 23 and another thing that makes this shoe so popular is the fact it comes in in almost every width and every size. You can get this from like a narrow all the way up to an extra wide and I think it goes all the way up to like a men's size 15. So no matter the shape of your foot, there should be a, both a ghost and adrenaline that fits you. Moving on to the upper, according to Brooks, they said they changed the fit of the upper and the 23 to make it more accommodating. And for me personally, I think it works quite well. I didn't feel like my toes were being pushed together and it had ample room through the midfoot and toe box. I think it feels kind of spot on, if you will, true to size. And I was quite happy with the overall fit and feel of the upper. Now, the material that they use is called engineered air mesh, and I think it's pretty good. Sometimes these more traditional engineered mesh uppers can get a little bit warm, and I did not find that to be the case here on the Adrenaline 23. The tongue is gusseted with strips of fabric on the lateral and medial side to keep it in place. It has an average amount of padding, nothing too crazy. It feels very much like a Brooks experience. One thing I will say is, while the tongue is gusseted here on the Adrenaline 23, it is not gusseted on the Ghost 15, so a key difference between the two, although rather small. If we move to the back of the shoe, it has a ton of padding, very plush premium experience with an extremely rigid heel counter, which makes sense because you kind of want that on a stability shoe. Overall, in my opinion, the lockdown was solid, didn't have any heel lift, and I thought it was quite comfortable. Feels like a very much a conventional Brooks kind of experience, if you will, kind of what you've come to expect from Brooks running shoe. And when I asked Brooks what the key differences are between the two models, they really said it's just the guide rails, kind of implying that the upper is pretty much identical between the Adrenaline and the Ghost. And that's what I found with some minor exceptions, the tongue again gusseted here on the Adrenaline, not gusseted on the Ghost. And then like some small differences like the plastic overlays through the midfoot to give you a little bit extra security. But otherwise they are very, very similar, if not identical. The midsole has been updated this year. It's DNA Loft V2, same kind of midsole compound we see on the Brooks Ghost. And like I've talked about before, the only real difference here is the guide rail. So it has a very similar ride. DNA Loft V2 is a mixture of rubber, air, and EVA foam. And this version of DNA Loft V2 is softer compared to what we saw on the Adrenaline 22. So the Adrenaline gets a bit softer, just like we saw with the Ghost 15. However, unlike the Ghost 15, the Adrenaline has guide rails, one on the lateral and one on the medial side, kind of keep you going the correct direction. The guide rail on the medial side is going to be a bit more substantial compared to the one on the lateral side. 
Guardrails are a much less intrusive stability mechanism compared to a traditional firm medial post. If you're not excessively pronating or supinating and hitting those foam walls, the guide rails just kind of disappear into the background. So if you're a neutral runner, but you want some kind of stability for some of those longer runs, if your form happens to break down, I think the guide rail system works quite well. And then the other nice thing about the guide rail system is it works for those that happen to pronate and supinate, where some stability shoes only really work for those that happen to roll inwards or pronate. In my experience, I think the best way to describe this midsole is it has a very traditional feeling to it. It feels like your classic tried and true running shoe. It doesn't have a whole lot of energy return to it, especially when we compare it to something like the Glycerin with its nitrogen infused foam. And I think we'll be seeing that kind of foam here on the, uh, the Adrenaline in future iterations. And I'll also say the level of cushioning feels pretty moderate compared to all the crazy stack heights we're seeing nowadays. They're actually coming out with like a Brooks Ghost Max. Um, and I'm, they, it will probably come out with an Adrenaline GTS Max as well. So I think stack heights are getting larger and larger, and that kind of makes this feel like a more moderately cushioned experience. And as far as what this is good for, I think it works for a wide variety of runs. It's kind of like your tried and true workhorse daily trainer. You can use it for your long runs. You can pick up the pace in it. It kind of does a little bit of everything. Now, is it the best at any one of those runs? Probably not, but if you're someone who wants like one shoe to kind of handle it all and give you a little bit of guidance with those guide rails, I think that is what the Adrenaline GTS is best at. And if you're a fan of Brooks and you like last year's version but wanted a little bit more cushioning here, just a little bit more squish to the midsole, I think you'll be happy with this change. Moving on to the outsole, we have a ton of rubber coverage here and it's very similar to the Ghost, however slightly different. The only key difference I can see is the midfoot section is connected which stiffens things up just a bit and helps with the overall stability. The forefoot rubber is going to be a softer, grippier substance, while the heel rubber is going to be a harder, more durable material for just overall longevity. You get full rubber coverage here, and they also added this small bit of rubber between the flex grooves to try to stiffen things up and try to make it a little bit more snappy. I think it has a little bit of an impact, but it's nothing truly that noticeable, especially because I'm used to running things with plates in them, and that really does move the needle so just adding a little bit of rubber between the forefoot or between the flex screws does kind of make things a little bit more stiff in the forefoot but nothing anything massive like a plate would if that makes any sense at all so when it comes down to it if the adrenaline 23 makes some minor changes midsole gets a little bit softer upper a little bit more room to it they change the outsole lug pattern connected some of the flex screws to try to stiffen things up and make it a little bit more snappy Overall, this is kind of like your tried and true Brooks running shoe. Gets the job done. It's nothing too fancy, nothing super exciting. But if you're a fan of Brooks or for someone who wants just like a conventional, relatively stable option with those guide rails that kind of keep you going in the correct direction, I think it works well. I was you know, quite happy with the performance. It's just it's kind of your just typical conventional running shoe. It's just the best way to put it. Gets the job done. Brooks knows what they're doing. The only kind of thing I will say as far as a negative goes is it's just there's nothing exciting about it. I think there's a lot of midsole foams and technologies coming out that really kind of get you excited to use a running shoe. And there are also some exciting stability options coming out. And I think the adrenaline stays true to its past being kind of your classic go-to option that Brooks is used to making. So I'm hoping they make some very interesting changes in the future. I think we'll probably see something with like the nitrogen infused foam here in the Adrenaline series, kind of update the midsole foam, make it a little bit thicker, make it a little bit more interesting. So I think that's the direction they have to take it because that's the direction all the other running shoes are kind of going nowadays. And it's pretty exciting. So it's nice to see that there's some competition there. But for right now, I think this is, you know, just a solid conventional go-to stability running shoe. Nothing crazy to write home about. It just gets the job done day after day. So let me know down in the comments what do you think of the Adrenaline series and what direction do you want to see Brooks take it? I would love to hear from you. Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.